So what's the best IT? There's so many different things out there. Every year there seems to be something new coming out, some new way of eating, some new style of eating, some whatever it is. Um, there's always something new coming out and there's just so many things that we've got to take into consideration. Um, I thought I'd just do a quick little video just to explain my experience of all the different styles of eating that I think have the most merit to them, my experience with them, um, pros and cons, you know, for lifestyle, for health, whatever, you know, I'll talk about briefly about each one of these on the board here. So anyway, first one uh, I thought we'd talk about is the one that we all know about, uh, the food pyramid. Um, we've all seen this growing up. We went to school, it's in textbooks, it's, it was all over TV and, um, well, it's, it's, it's pretty much wherever you see anyone talking about health or like some sort of government program for food, it was based around the food, the food pyramid. And the foundation of the food pyramid is uh, the original one anyway. The, the updated one, I believe, is different, but <laughs> we'll just talk about the original one, was based around grains. And a lot of these were processed grains. So you got flour, bread, wheat, any like all that stuff that's been processed down to something that's that'll last a long time. It you can do a lot of things with it. Sandwiches for example, pasta, cereal, crackers, all sorts of things that um, can be used with other food. Um, grains were based as the foundation for all those meals. And then you had your veg and your fruit in moderate in going up the food chain then you had your dairy and your meat and your oil fat sweets at the top so that's it's not too bad but just the foundation of processed and refined grains down the bottom i mean they probably do say like whole grains but they're not that much better really like it's humans aren't really meant to eat grains in large amounts like there's people that have the celiac um you know that's definitely a problem for them um for me i, I find myself that i'm a lot slower on grains i am um, thinking is slower I guess my insulin levels are going up all that sort of stuff um, I've just I've never been a huge fan of grains um, so I guess the food pyramid's not too bad it's pretty well rounded I guess you know you're getting your fruit and your veg your meat and you're keeping your sweets and your oils and fats fairly low uh, I guess what um, has been recently discovered in the last 15 to 10 odd years is that good fats like olive oil, unrefined fat, stuff like that, um, is actually really good for you. Um, you got your fats, soluble vitamins. Um, it's ex excellent for satiety. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but feeling full essentially for long periods of time. So avocados, uh, peanut butter, coconut oil, can be co coconut oil is a bit controversial, but <laughs> it's, in my experience, it's, um, it's helped me a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the food pyramid's not too bad, but I think um, it, with all the the new information that we've learnt um, in the last decade or so, that it definitely needs some in, some refinement. But overall, it's not too bad. So anyway, moving on, we have got the vegan diet, and that's very popular. Um, my sister's a hundred percent vegan. She does it for ethical reasons. There's all sorts of reasons to do the vegan diet, um, but Ethical reasons is usually the, the big draw card for a lot of people. They don't want to harm animals. They don't want to consume animal products. They want animals to be out there in the wild doing their thing, having a good time. And, uh, and that's fine. You know, that's, that's really good in my opinion. Like I don't think I could slaughter a, a cow or a pig to eat it. Um, I just, I mean, if I had to do it, I probably would, but you know, it's a day-to-day -day thing with all these other choices that we have. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I had, I'd have the stomach for it. So um, it's just definitely a big disconnect in our society of um, the uh, processed, or uh, well not the processed, the the, um, the factory farming that we do for um, animals, uh, and uh, how that <laughs> goes from the you know, the farmlands to our um, supermarket shelves. You know, like there's there's an enormous um, uh, process that takes care of that. So. Um, the vegan diet is pretty good, uh, as long as it's unprocessed stuff. Uh, beans, vegetables, fruit, potatoes, uh, things like rice, um, if you eat all that sort of stuff, it's usually pretty good. Unfortunately, the problem with the vegan diet is 
you, it's um, hard to get all the vitamins and nutrients um, that you need. So, you know, your omega-3s, and not just plant omega-3s, you need your DHA, EPA, which is found in like fatty fish, um, to some extent uh, red meat. Um, you know, zinc, it's hard to get a lot of zinc on the vegan diet. Um, and uh, B12 is another thing, and iron too, for, for, for women especially. Um, there's, uh, it, you can supplement with those things, but overall, I th supplements, you know, they're not always the greatest thing because it's hard just to, to absorb, absorb those things in those synthetic, you know, pills or capsules you take. So like, it, I guess you can get by on a vegan diet, but for me, I've, I, just, I just love eating meat. <laughs> I wish I could eat less, um, I've tried going vegan or cutting down, but I just feel I, I'm not as sharp, I'm not as uh, satisfied with my food. Um, I don't have, like, it, my, 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 almost my hormones aren't quite right. Um, I, I, eating meat for me is, um, just makes me feel good. So unfortunately, uh, there's that side, the downside of the vegan diet. So maybe one day when we've got lab, lab grown meat, I'll try that. And if it, you know, makes me feel the same way, sure, you know, I'll get onto the vegan diet. But you know, the, the vegan diet's also good for environmental reasons. Um, you've got your, uh, the, the enormous amount of water and uh, crops that we have to grow to feed animals to, for us to consume is just insane you know and the emissions that these animals give off you know your cows with the the methane and that sort of stuff and just all the the whole um economy based around meat is just uh, is is insane like we, there's a lot of stuff that we have to fix um, about the meat industry if we want to continue to consume meat the way we're doing but anyway i'm getting off topic um, the next one uh, is carnival diet. Uh, I haven't tried this one, but it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Of the stories I've heard, um, it seems to have helped a lot of people. People that have had lots of digestive issues in the past, you know, they've tried the vegan diet, might have worked for a little bit, but then you know they've had issues, and then they've tried everything else, and they've tried the carnival diet, and their energy goes up, mental clarity, digestive issues go away, um, and it seems to be this miracle thing that. Um, works for some people. Um, I mean, I guess I haven't talked to a lot of people and it seems to be a fairly like um, underground thing at the moment still because meat's fairly expensive and there's a lot of controversial things about consuming 100% meat all day. You know, it's bad for the planet. Some people would say it gives you cancer, but it seems to be helping some people. Um, the big thing about the carnival diet is that um, you're not consuming uh, lots of fiber. So, I suppose some people might do better with their type of digestive system that um, the meat can just pass through really quickly. It's um, something that I don't think a lot of people have done much research in. Well, I certainly haven't looked into it too much, but all the anecdotal um, stories that I've heard, um, is they've, some people have, yeah, like it's really just saved their life, like chronic inflammation, that sort of stuff. So I guess for me, uh, the issue, issue with the carnival diet is uh, there's no vitamin C. It's very hard to get vitamin C. Um, I think you can, you can get vitamin C from beef liver and maybe some other kinds of liver, but those things are pretty nasty to eat. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's ways to cook them where it's not too bad or you can like mix it in with your mincemeat or whatever, but I don't know, I've tried ch chicken liver before and that was, that was just funky. So um, yeah, like I don't know if I can do that again, but maybe in the future when um, I'm trying like a, the next big health thing, you know, getting on the beef liver. Anyway, um, keto, the keto diet, that's, uh, that's a really popular one, especially with uh, uh, d the new age YouTube doctors <laughs> and uh, a lot of, um, especially older people with um, blood sugar problems. Um, this sort of thing, you know, you high fat, moderate protein, low carbohydrates, um, sort of around the 50 grams per day, uh, seems to be the golden sort of range for a ketogenic diet and putting your body in ketosis where it burns fat. I think most people know that. Um, really good things about the keto diet is uh, it pretty much keeps your insulin levels pretty low, which um, is really good for people with diabetes or any sort of inflammation. Um, high insulin levels for long periods of time, are just there's, there's just a myriad of health issues related to that, which I might talk about when I talk about intermittent fasting. But anyway, keto, the ketogenic diet is good for low active people, like people that aren't very, um, they don't exercise too much, like they don't play sport, they don't 
uh, move a uh, couple of boxes around for, you know, like a removalist company. Um, people that just have a fairly easy lifestyle, I think. That's what I've found. Um, I, I've always just found like I need carbohydrates to, to give me that sort of overdrive effect where, you know, with sport I can like keep on going. Um, I can, you know, with work I can power through like, um, you know, tough jobs or whatever it is. Um, and just for recovery too, uh, like working out, like I, I just, I just need carbs to replenish my glycogen stores, my muscles. So I think, yeah, the ketogenic diet, if done correctly with healthy keto, you know, like your, um, lots of vegetables as the carbohydrate source and, uh, you know, lots of good fats, moderate protein, like your red, a little bit of red meat, um, chicken, fish, uh, and then other like olive oil, peanut butter, that sort of stuff. Um, it's, uh, I think, yeah, the kids are no, it's pretty good for people with some sort of blood sugar issue, but overall, like for a normal life, um, not very practical. Um, it's very hard to, to, to do it, you know, take, getting takeout or any sort of going to any restaurant because so many things are laced with sugar or, um, you know, there's some sort of bread or um, potatoes or just about everything comes with some sort of carb. So, um, yeah, like it's in theory, it's, it's a good idea. But I think in practice, yeah, it just doesn't quite make the cut for the majority of people. So intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is really good. Um, it's probably, it's the most different one to all these ones here. It's, it's not actually a diet. It's, it's a, an eating protocol, uh, essentially where you abstain from eating for a very long period of time throughout the day. And you have like a little window for when you eat your food. So for example, you could... Um, eat, your, eat your dinner at six o'clock p.m. and then you, know, you don't eat all night and then you wake up and you maybe you don't have breakfast straight away or you hold off until lunch um, and then that's when you, you, you consume your food from lunch to dinner like and that's ideally a six hour window. For a lot of people though um, that's really tough to, to skip breakfast and then go to work any sort of activity um, yeah like it's a very small amount of people can um, to, can live like this, but, uh, like you have to train yourself to do it, like to, to be able to, to, to have that, to, to burn your fat stores naturally. It takes quite a while to, to, to get onto that sort of, um, way your body works. So, um, if you, yeah, like if you have like two weeks off or whatever on a holiday and then you, you try and do it, you probably, you could do it. But for me, like I just need to eat something in the morning before I go to work for any sort of workout or else I'm just tired. I'd, don't feel very good like I get lots of inflammation um, I just I just need those nutrients and the protein and some sort of carb to, to, to get me going so you know like I try and do it as much as I can like on the weekends I might um, eat at 6 p.m. and then go till 9 or so in the morning so that's you know about what's that 15 hours that's not too bad um, and that seems to work pretty well for me um, it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely something that I think uh, people that don't have a job or like flexible hours can do a lot better. But for the majority of us that, you know, they work 40 hours a week or whatever it is, um, yeah, it's, it's fairly difficult to, to follow through with. So which one of these is the best and which one should you, should you do? It really comes down to the individual, to, to your life, to your goals, to what works for you, what you've tried. Um, and, uh, yeah, what, what you like as well, you know, like you might really love breakfast food. So you just have to wake up and eat your breakfast. You know, I wouldn't eat cereal. Cereal's, <laughs> cereal's pretty much always a bad idea, but, um, you know, like if you want to wake up and have bacon and eggs, you know, go to work, you know, that, that's fine. You know, that's, that's a pretty good keto breakfast, but they all have their pros and cons. The food pyramid's pretty good like it's pretty well rounded as long as you don't you can't add your processed uh, grains as much as you can uh, the vegan diet is uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful idea for the planet for, for you know yourself um, but yeah in, in practice you know you, you kind of do miss out on a few things and it's pretty hard to to live like that in my experience carnival diet just costs so much money to eat that much meat all day but hey look if you sick and you need something you just you just want to try something to see if it'll help your um after you try everything else yeah sure go for it see see what happens keto diet yeah it's you know also like pretty good but not quite there for like activity so yeah like you could try a whole bunch of different things um 
like do a few different like you know go vegan for one day carnival for one day <laughs> keto for the next day um as long as you're really getting all your um, veggies you know your greens getting enough protein um getting enough fat as long as you're sort of hitting like you know a bit of everything i think they this you know saying is done to death it's such a cliche everything in moderation but i think as long as you don't eat processed stuff and you're getting enough veggies and good protein you should be fine all right cheers